We're here in the Webflow Designer, and we're just kicking off our design and development work. By the end of this particular video, we'll have finished this hero section, made it completely responsive. So let's start with building the hero section. Step one, we'll drag in a section. Of course, we can drag a div block right into that section. This div block can serve as a custom container. And on this, we'll set a width of 90% and a maximum of 1000 pixels, we'll also center it, and we can apply all sorts of flex properties to this. The point is, we're setting up this custom container to keep everything neatly bound towards the center of the screen. And we've set a minimum of 200 pixels here so that we can see what's going on. Let's name this, let's name this class container, since we'll be using it throughout the project. And we'll drag another div block inside. Now, this div block will serve as our left card, the left side of our hero section. So we'll name it hero left. And inside, we'll drag a heading. Why? Because headings help add structure and hierarchy to our page. They're also made up of words, which can look good if we put some effort into making the words look good, like choosing a font, perhaps selecting your body and going into the body all pages tag to ditch your comfort typefaces like Arial, Comic Sans, or Papyrus, and choosing something sophisticated like Poppins. It's worth noting that before we started recording, we secretly went into project settings over to the fonts tab, where it says fonts, and we added some custom Google typefaces, which of course we can do at any time by browsing and then selecting that font from the dropdown. Now, back in the designer, let's select the hero left div block we created earlier and set a maximum width. We'll do 550 pixels. And then to create that horizontal bar on the top, let's drag in another div block. This div block can have explicit values for dimensions, like a width, in this case 80 pixels, and a height, in this case we'll just do 2 pixels. And so we can see it, let's set a background color. We'll set the background to black. And we can see it looks great. Let's select our div block again, and now we'll go and add some margin. We can do this to both sides at once, using Option or Alt and dragging, and then we'll add some padding, we'll add some padding to our section. And once we do that, we can create a combo class. We'll call it hero section. This lets us make specific changes based on our section class, like height, which will apply specifically to this section. We can also go in, as we did with our container, and set flex layout properties. Of course, we can always come back to this at a later time. But for now, with our hero left section complete, we can drag in another div block into the container. And this one will be our hero right section. Now, we'll set the position to absolute. This way, we can set an explicit value regarding its distance from the right side, and we'll set that to zero pixels. Now, keep in mind, because the position is absolute, it's positioned around the first parent element that's not set to auto. So, of course, what we can do is set our container's position to relative. This puts our hero right div zero pixels from the right side of the container. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We'll set a width, 800 pixels, we'll set a height, 600 pixels, and in this case, we'll use a div block to position our image inside the hero right div block. We'll create a class for this div block called hero image, and like any great div block that has an image, let's choose an image. Now, our assets panel lets us upload an image, and we have a perfect picture of Janet, which is definitely her real name. Let's configure the background image settings to cover and center in terms of position, and to get it to conform to the hero right div, we'll set its position to absolute, choosing the magical numbers of 100% for the width, and of course, 100% for the height. Now, everything's starting to take shape, but this photo of the person who is definitely Janet is covering the hero left div block. So, we can select the hero left div and set its position to relative, which lets us now set a positive Z index, like one. We have our hero image, which sits inside of our hero right div, which sits inside of our container. Now, we can see all of this, including our hero left div in our navigator, but for now, we're going to add the last major component, which is the list. We'll position the list in hero right, and when it's displayed on the screen, we don't want this list to show bullets. Now, just because we don't want bullets doesn't mean we don't want the list. With our unordered list selected, let's go down and set its position to absolute. This will let us position it so that it pushes off from the container. We can set distance from the right, we can set distance from the top in any direction, but we'll land at about 80 pixels. Now, a list item can be used to hold any number of elements. In this case, we're just double clicking on each list item and typing in the categories that we want to feature on this website. And a good way to modify all list items in a project is to select the tag all list items in a project. Let's add some margin from the top to add some spacing. 
And we'll set our text alignment and our font size, and we'll set all caps and character spacing and font weight and pretty much get this exactly how we want it. When we're done, we'll click out, we'll go to our body all pages tag. Why? We're going to make the font color bright red. Or we can choose any color in the color picker, or simply select the preset, in this case, black. Now, we've been designing in the desktop breakpoint. Of course, if we grab our handles and move left and then right, we can test that responsiveness, we can test that fluidity on varying device widths. Let's go to tablet view to see how it looks on there. Again, it looks pretty good. It's responding exactly as we'd want it to respond on tablet. Now, what do we do on mobile landscape? The elements respond fluidly, but that's not really the issue here. On mobile landscape, screen real estate is valuable. So how do we minimize this blank space at the top? If we adjust padding on our hero section, nothing seems to make a difference. Why? Because the content is centered using flex, and we set that height, we set it to 800 pixels. If we change that, if we change it to something like 500 pixels, it works perfectly. Let's go ahead and test that responsiveness. And as we drag, we can see it's responsive and fluid and beautiful, except this. We can keep these words together by using a non-breaking space. And to do that, we'll go in and we'll simply press shift space to replace regular spacing with non-breaking spaces. And now if we check the pieces, New York and City remain together. Now, spacing on the right, that's from the container, which earlier we set to 90% width. We wanna keep that width for other content, so let's adjust hero right to pull back 6% on the right side. This percentage, of course, means as we scale down or scale up in mobile landscape or even mobile portrait, the gap on the right is gone. Now, here's an important detail. We have to be really persnickety about this. That hero image is overlapping. It's hanging over the bottom of the section. We can simply style our hero section combo class. We set overflow to hidden. Let's continue down to mobile portrait, and it's really good to test responsiveness in this breakpoint as well. And there are three things we're gonna focus on, the heading, the horizontal bar, and the list. So let's start with the unordered list. And the first thing we can do here is adjust to make it 20 pixels from the right instead of 100. That looks a lot better, and as we scale, it maintains that 20 pixel spacing. And after we're done with that, let's move on to the heading. Super straightforward. We're just gonna make a change to the font size and the line height. Of course, we're programmed now to check fluidity, so let's check fluidity by grabbing the handle and checking fluidity. Looks good. And finally, the last piece is this div block, which we really need to organize and name this horizontal bar. You can name it whatever you want. But in mobile portrait, we'll set it to display none. That way it saves that valuable screen real estate. Let's go over and select hero right. We'll adjust that height to 400 pixels. And of course our section, which is also manually set, we can set again to 400 pixels. And finally, the last two major steps for this section. One, let's adjust the heading. We can name this specifically hero heading. and We'll make a margin adjustment so that we can push it off from the top and give it some breathing room. Then we'll click and drag again to give it some more breathing room. And then second, the final thing is this unordered list. Give it some space on the top by adjusting from 80 pixels to say 30 pixels. Let's test responsiveness and fluidity one last time, and it looks fantastic. That is mobile portrait. So that's the hero section, completely custom. We visually developed and manipulated all our HTML and CSS for all these breakpoints, and we can always take it further. Maybe we decide to add a filter to adjust the hero image. There are all sorts of filter types. We can rotate through and adjust the hue. This, of course, changes the color as we rotate the hue. Or we could go ultra modern and minimal. We can choose grayscale. It's that simple. But that's all for now. In the rest of this course, we're going to build out the other sections. And in two of those cases, we'll be making a database to build our design on what we put in custom collections.